song together.
the prophet came to him and told him to set your house in order. This is it. And we know how, we know the power of Isaiah. Isaiah just pull up. You know how the prophets back in the day, they just pull up on you and say, it's over and walk out. They had all the power. They had all the direction from God because this is what God said. I'm going to say what God said and I'm going to leave you out of here. I don't care how you feel. I don't. And look, they, they was bold. They didn't care how many military people you had. They didn't care how big your fortress was. They didn't care how powerful you was. When God told them to walk in there and tell you that it's over, they just walked in there and said, they didn't even preach. They didn't know who. They just walked in and said, King, you're going to die. And they had to turn back around and you had to live with the report of what they said. But Hezekiah, when he got his report, turned to the wall. The power of prayer. He turned to the wall. Hallelujah. Like I just said, many prophets, he wasn't the only one to have Cain with a bad report to him. Many of the prophets exposed people for their bad behaviors. Ask David. Many of, many of the prophets came along and told him it would not rain. Let's, let's deal with Elijah and how they, they moved through the course of the Bible telling people this is going to happen to you and, and this was not going to happen. We're going to shut the rain down and all this stuff that the prophets were saying and Ezekiel comes to this point. At this point, Ezekiel hit that report. But he don't settle for that report. He turned towards the wall. And what I love about it, he kept saying, God, look how I live for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look how I live my life, God. Look what I did. I did all this for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, many people will tell you, you're going to die anyway. <laughs> Just go ahead and die. But Hezekiah said, I got some more work to do. <laughs> Look at the boldness. Hallelujah. I got more work to do. Because to be honest with you, some people would achieve a certain points in their life and, you know, achieve this much. I believe he was in his 20s when he became King Hezekiah. I believe he was a young man and all that kind of good stuff. And, you know, he achieved a lot in life and to hear that bad report was crazy. Wow. So we talk about the power of prayer. And that this power need to shift into the hands of the individuals. Uh -huh. Because what I, the picture I was painting is that the prophet had the power. Yeah. The prophet was in direct line with what God said. The prophet was the one that God spoke to. Uh -huh. See, the king, the king needed the prophet because during those days, the, the, the prophet was to keep the king in order. Right. To hear from God. Yeah. You're the king now. You yeah. you got all this achievement, but after a while, can you really hear from God? Uh, when you can have as many women as you want to. Yeah. When you can have when you got fame and glory. Are you really listening to God? That's what causing a lot of people to trip up. That's why people that may walk upon this and may come upon this message or hear this message, you need to park somewhere where you can hear from God. I don't care if you sit in the home and and you got him on your internet, I don't care, or social media, but you need to hear from God. Never uh, boast yourself so high that you can't hear God. Don't allow your world to be so crowd crowded with so much stuff that you can't hear from God. And what God was doing for the kings, he helped them. I'm going to make you align with the prophets. So the prophet job was to totally hear from God. But guess what? Hezekiah knew God himself. Oh my God. It would have been so easy just to leave it all in the hands of the prophets. I don't even need a relationship with God myself uh, because I already got somebody. That's your job. Hallelujah. But guess what? I love God too. Hallelujah. Guess what? I want to know who this God is uh, that you talk to. Hallelujah. I want to guess what? I'm going to speak to him myself too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I love him. Hallelujah. So when we go through this course and we understand that the prophets was directly in line with God and they was supposed to keep the kings in checks and the kings had to understand and submit or really be in line with the prophets to what God was saying. 
Because yes. remember, if you go back, the people wanted a king. Yes. And they got what they wanted. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But that presented a problem because now you had a king. Yes. But was he aligned with God? That's it. So Hezekiah had to humble himself. Yes. And this is what we see that we lack nowadays. Can you humble yourself? Oh. To order. Can you humble yourself to instructions? Can you humble yourself? Not so somebody can rule over you so you can hear clearly from God. Hallelujah. Because we can get so high ourselves we're not hearing from God. And God has to speak to others in order to get our attention. God has to speak to others and he has someone on post that you will respect his position in order to hear what he has to say. And you say, preacher, while I'm really emphasizing the voice of the prophets nowadays, and I know it has changed because now we know the preachers are the ones that can speak and really in, in tune with God. But guess what the society is trying to do? They're trying to close the mouth of the people that are close to God. That hear from God. Uh, and of course, they can, they can bring up, see, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. And you have to be careful with how media spin things. Uh, so if they just constantly only showing ugly things about one thing, you have to be mature enough to say, well, let me see what the whole pie look like. Hallelujah. You can bring one, two, or three people, but overall, what is the kingdom doing? Uh, you can bring up one or two other names uh, that may have fallen off, uh, but that don't blanket the whole whole body that don't covers everybody but at the same time you're not mentioning mentioning the ones that are still in the fight you're not mentioning the ones that, that got the soup kitchen you're not mentioning the ones that's praying in the hospital you're not mentioning the ones that is giving out money to the poor you're not mentioning the ones you're not saying nothing about that you only want to paint one picture but I'm here to tell you today you must uh, connect yourself to hear a voice also. Hallelujah. I'm giving Hezekiah all his props that he understood God. He was able to reach out and talk to God. But I'm trying to tell you, if you understand the structure, he was the prophet was responsible for him to hear from God. Hallelujah. That was the order of the day. That's why you always had a king and a prophet. Hallelujah. When David was off, he told him to look at himself. What do you see? And when he was ready to kill one, he said, well, you do the same thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just paraphrasing. So you see how that connection, I always tell you, you need a connection. A lot of people want to fly by themselves. And now everybody talking about, I can do this by myself. Huh? But you don't even talk to God. I had this conversation with my son because one guy on the podcast took the liberty to talk about the church, but at the same time, he was smoking weed. I said, this the, I said, the devil is bold now, right? I mean, he's talking about the church. I don't care what the, uh, the world legalized, but he felt real bold to talk about spiritual things while he just oh, eyes just to close and he just going off, giving instructions about what the church and what you should not do. I said the devil is bold now. Hallelujah. I said he ain't even hiding anymore. He's not even making it look good anymore. Hallelujah. Anybody can say what they want to say. Hallelujah now. That's, that's how I sit up there and say that's fine. But you hear what I'm saying? We can't. This is not the hour for us to be quiet. Amen. This is not the time for us to silence the voice of the prophets. Ah. This is not the time for us to silence the voice of the preachers and evangelists. We cannot silence the voices of those that hear from God. Hallelujah. And even if we ain't on their level, we're responsible for hearing from God ourselves. We are tired of hearing people talk about the disconnect is better than the connection. I'm here to tell you we are more powerful connected than we are disconnected. Anybody preach that to you is preaching the wrong thing to you. Anybody is preaching that to you is preaching for you to fail and not to see. Hallelujah. We are stronger together than we are apart. That's why we got to watch ourselves in the ministry. That's what I'm talking about. The power of prayer. Hallelujah. The power of prayer. Hallelujah. 
So I'm here to say, I had to break down the responsibility of Isaiah and how the responsibility to the king. He didn't necessarily have the fame and the glory. He necessarily wasn't ruling the community. But I just gave you a line of prophets that just walked into the king or leadership and told them what God said. And I'm here to present this to you today. They're trying to silence the voice yeah, yeah. of our prophets, yeah. of our preachers, uh -huh. of our leaders. Yes. Yes. It's a tactic of the enemy. That's how we want to hear from God. Amen. Amen. And I'm here to preach this to somebody today because if you silence all those voices of the people that I said in leadership, yes. what the devil going to do with the rest of the oh. sheep? Oh. And that's what we need to be concerned about. Right. Mm -hmm. Now we can deal with all the issues that we have within the church. Uh -huh. But let's not get it twisted mm -hmm. of the power of the church yeah, yeah, yeah. as a whole. Mm -hmm. Amen. I got, I got a little off dealing because I got caught up on I wanted to give you the angle that Hezekiah yeah. prayed uh -huh. yes. after he received that bad report. Right. And then you going forward, it came to pass afar. Mm -hmm. Isaiah was going out into the midst court. Check this out. Yeah. That the <laughs> word of the Lord came to him saying, as he was exiting like he did. Yeah. As he was exiting, it says, turn again and tell Hezekiah, yeah. the captain of my people. Uh -huh. Thus says the Lord God of David, the, thy father. I have heard, check this out, the power of prayer. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I have seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. Hallelujah. On the third day, I shall go up unto the house of the Lord. Uh, and I will add on to the days 15 years. And I will deliver thee and this, and this city out of the hands of the king of Satan. God, you know what? God, God amazes me. Because Hezekiah, you know, when you really. When you pay attention to your Bible, when you really touch the heart of God, not only would he answer your prayer, he adds to it. The power of prayer. So you see why it's so important to teach the power of prayer? Because a lot of times you're not even asking God for everything. You just asking God for your particular situation. He was just praying, I hear your report, God. And he was just talking to God. And God said, I saw you. I saw you turn your face to the wall. And I, and I saw your tears. But God said, I'm going to heal you in 15 days. And you would say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We would have took the church up. But God said, I'm not just going to heal you. I'm going to add to this. I'm going to deliver your city out of the hands of those that were oppressed. Hallelujah. Just because he prayed. So I'm here to tell you the power of prayer. It avail as much. Hallelujah. So get ready. When you in your home and it's not looking or turning out the way that you want it to turn out, it's time for you to depend on prayer. Understand that you have the power when you pray and talk and things will change. All you need is for God to hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, watch him come through. Hallelujah. We just showed you in the word that Hezekiah was praying for one thing. I just hear this report that I'm going to die. And before the man could get, the man of God, the prophet could get all the way out, God changed his instructions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray so I want to pray so powerful uh, that they have to come back and give me a different report. Uh, I want to pray so powerful uh, that when they say that it's over, they're going to come back and say, you know what? Uh, it's not over. Something went wrong. Uh, I have been in those situations before when it looked like it was over, when it looked like it was no more. Uh, they had to come back to me and say, no, sir. Hallelujah. I had a, I've been through those situations. Uh, I've been on a job where they try to find me and I caught my wife uh, and I don't know if she was praying, but I was sitting up there debating with them like, wait a minute, y'all not gonna y'all not gonna talk about my character. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would have walked out the job for anything else, but when you tried to mess with my character, I had a problem. Hallelujah. But they told me it was gonna be one way. But when I got back in the office, they told me, Willie, Willie, sir, you can. 
can go back on the floor, go back to the work. They had one, they had one way in mind, but God had another. So I don't know who was praying for me during that time, but the report went one way. It came in one way, but they had to return and change the report. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Then three years later, I became the manager and made over twenty thousand dollars more than what I had before. This is not the season to be lost, uh, but I'm here to tell you I know what's going on in society. Yes, we're praying for Israel. Uh, yes, we're praying for Hades. Uh, yes, we're praying for Ukraine, uh, but I'm here to tell you uh, you have the power to change things. You have the power to change things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He didn't just watch Isaiah had something. No, no, Hezekiah, I'm sorry. Hezekiah had something. Hallelujah. He possessed something. Prophet, you're not the only one that prayed to God. You're not the only one. Hallelujah. I can pray too. Glory to God. And not only do I pray, God hear me also. The power of prayer. Hallelujah. So I'm here to tell somebody today, don't give up. Hallelujah. When you think that it's all over and you're down, I'm here to tell you, if you have nothing left, have a prayer left. <laughs> nothing left. Have a prayer left. <laughs> I understand that all your strength is gone. But well, all you need is say, Joy, Lord Jesus, help me. <laughs> Just have a prayer left. Hallelujah. I understand that everybody has walked out on you. And it seemed like nobody left. But I'm here to tell you, just have a prayer left. Hallelujah. Do not run out of your prayer. Hallelujah. You know God made sure even when you can't speak, God can hear. When you speak to him through your mind, just have a prayer left. Hallelujah. God. The power of prayer. So we see this dynamic, this extraordinary angle of the prophets giving a word that he heard from God. And you know how accurate they was back in the day. It's a different day now. They talk about headaches. They talk about, you know, what's your name? Is there a mint? And, uh, you know, that's what the prophets do now. These prophets was totally different. They went to upper powers. <laughs> they went to the upper stand, all the way to the top. And said, you're nasty. Your attitude that God said you want to die. And then walk out. Didn't care about your feelings. What I'm saying would make that so powerful. Hezekiah said, wait a minute. Yeah. Let me go talk to yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Let me go talk to God. Yes. Jesus. Yeah. And you know what was so crazy? The report changed. Oh. 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 The report changed. Uh -huh. And before he was able to get too far away, he had to turn around yeah. and give him Good news. Okay. That's right. The power of prayer. Yes. Yes. And, and keep this in mind that once when his prayer reached God, yes. 
God answered the prayer and added. Yeah, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. That's the God we serve. That's right. It's kind of like being at the restaurant. Once when you fed me and I paid for my bill, I leave a tip. Right, 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 right. God said, I, okay, I enjoy that prayer right there. I see your faith. I'm going to leave a tip. Hallelujah. I'm going to tip you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you increases. Oh, by the way, since you prayed to me, let me fix over here too. Hallelujah. Since you got my attention, let me fix the other areas that you didn't even mention. Hallelujah. Let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, let me clear you up, Hezekiah, all the way up. Let me catch you out the hands of the ones that try to keep you captive. Hallelujah. You praying just to live. I'm going to spend 15 years. Hallelujah. But in those 15 years, I'm going to set y'all free. That's crazy, right? And that's the angle. So what are you teaching to? The power of prayer. It sound that simple. A lot of times we walk around it. But Hezekiah taught us something. That while the church is praying, yes. you need to be praying. Yes. Hallelujah. You need to know him for yourself. Yes. Yes. You need to know who this God that the prophets, the preachers, and I'm praying to. I need to know him myself. Yes. So we're all responsible for a relationship with God. Yes. Hallelujah. Where all of us are responsible for a relationship with God. You should have a relationship. You should you know how we're over passing out them gifts. You should have a car. You should, that's how we that's how we pass out that you should know prayer. You should know prayer. You should know. You don't have one, you should know prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive it. Take it. Hallelujah. Just talk to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to shift and I'm going to shift and end it off of this because we're dealing with the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. Then when you come to the New Testament mm -hmm. and we're dealing with James 5 and 16 and this is real simple and we don't heard this a lot. It says confess your faults one to another That's good, right there. and pray and pray one for another. Look at that keeping us amongst us, that you may be healed, right? Yeah. The effectual fervent prayer of the fervent prayer, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Availeth much. Yes. Hallelujah. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? The power of prayer. I had to end it on this because in the church, in our community, we have become comfortable yeah. with division. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Come we have become comfortable yeah. with finding fault in our brothers and sisters. Yes. We yes. have become comfortable yes. with. So now the ideal is mm -hmm. if you do something wrong, it's my job mm -hmm. to keep my foot on your neck. Ah, mm -hmm. see that? Mm -hmm. So I had to bring this scripture up dealing with power yeah. on prayer. Yeah. Because it was saying, it said, confess your faults to one another, that's right. fine, uh -huh. and pray one for another, uh -huh. that you may be healed, right? Uh -huh. that's, that's fine, we're dealing with the healing and all that, right. but we know when you're confessing your faults to others, there's other things that are going to come out yeah. too. Yeah. There's ugly things that are going to come out too. Right. But the tactics nowadays really is putting a bullseye on you for yeah. other people to attack you, uh -huh. right? Yes. So it goes down. The fervent prayer of the righteous avails as much. Mm -hmm. So immediately behind that, it just tells you, just pray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they will be healed. Mm -hmm. But it says develop much. And when I was doing my research and develop much, right. it means, and, and some of the meaning, it means gain. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, what that got to do with me praying for my brothers? Mm -hmm. First it said, confessing your faults it's to one another. Amen. So we keeping it in-house. We dealing with each other. To one another. And when you hear scriptures like that, that means that we're not perfect. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. So everybody walks in the church think you're going to walk into a perfect place. But it's telling you confess your faults. So the scriptures is letting you know we're not going to be perfect, right? We're going to have issues. You're going to have issues. You're going to have some good days and bad days, right? And confess your faults to one another. Uh -huh. Right? And so now this is the unity that we have. But it says the, pr the, the prayer of the righteous man avails yes. much. Yes. 
So the power of prayer is what we need to triumph over our wrongs. Amen. The power of prayer avails as much. So we need to get to a point in our life. So basically what I was trying to say is put your power in your prayer. Put your time in praying for your brother. Put your energy put your energy in praying for your brother and not criticizing your brother. So put your, see, it's directing our prayer in a different way. So it's saying when stuff go wrong and it don't look the way that you think that it should look, it's telling you instead of criticize, pray. It's telling you instead of attack your brother, pray. It's telling you instead of doing this, and then it said, and when it said avellas, that just simply means gain. Why? That makes us better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. See, by you not winning, I'm not winning. Uh -huh. By you losing, we're losing as a whole. See, we don't count, we don't, see, we're overlooking the fact that how much we need each other. We're overlooking the fact that I need my brother just as much as I need everybody else that's in here. When you fall along the wayside or you fall out along the wayside, we suffer. So the Bible is teaching us the power of prayer. So the power of prayer is going gonna, is gonna to stop us from helping our brothers fall along the wayside. For attacking our brothers along the wayside, for creating discourse in the church and all this division, it's very important for us to get beyond those things now. Why? Because we got a greater purpose. We have to complete the mission. Right. We have to complete the mission. I know we see everything that's going on in the world. You know what's so funny? For those that don't read Bible, don't don't think the Bible is a mystery. Everything that's happened, my Bible already told me about. It. Hello. We're not confused. Amen. Right? Amen. But the thing is now by the power of prayer amongst ourselves mm -hmm. at another level where it's very important, we have to now look at our ministries individually. Because yes. this is something that's probably taking preachers home. Uh, this is probably the stuff that's draining our pastors uh, right now. Yes. This is the stuff that is tearing up churches mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, yeah. See, you, we want to look at the big things, the big Devastating things. That's not destroying the churches. It's the little fox fires. The little fires. The little, the little fires are just tearing up. Because they go unnoticed for a while. Then by the time you pay attention to them, it's out of control. So that's the importance of prayer. Prayer redirects us away from criticizing. The power of prayer redirect us away from down in our brothers. The power of prayer redirect us from harming our brother and our sisters. Hallelujah. So what are you saying, preacher? So when you see these situations happen, pray. Pray. Understand the power of prayer. You got power yourself. We just went to Hezekiah and we showed you that the power he had. I know you're waiting for the leadership. I know you're waiting for everybody else. But now it's time for everybody to pray. Hallelujah for certain individuals. I know certain individuals drive your nerves, but you have to pray. Give me patience, God. Give me patience, God. I'm not going to open my mouth, God. Why? Because I'm not going to damage myself. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Throwing grenades in the body is only going to hurt us. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, and I tell people a lot of times when I when I did get saved, I came from the streets and I said, man, the brotherhood on the street sometimes had a greater, um, a closer relationship than they did with people I saw in the church. That was like kind of disappointing yeah. to me. And, you, and, 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 and look, and look, I'm not saying that the, the, the minimize or the down one side. There's a mini brother in prison now that ain't, that's not supposed to be in prison. They took the charge for their own brother. That's not their blood brother, their mother or their father. They get locked up taking charges for their boy because the street is teaching them. You can't snitch, you go down. So they're getting life sentences, 20, 15 years, getting out of jail because they took a charge for somebody else. And you try to tell me we can't get along? There's nothing, where I came from, there's nobody in the church carrying guns that gonna make me take a charge for them. It was a whole different environment. 
it was totally different. So what I'm trying to tell you, the power of prayer, we need to get out of these things, uh, yeah, these yeah. things that are hurting us. We need to get to a place uh, where we're going to have established peace. We're going we gonna to have to get to a place where there's love. Yeah. And guess what? Some people going to be in a situation for a little while. Uh -huh. Some people are not going to change. Okay. It's going to take them a while. But what we talk about, we talk about the power of prayer. Yeah. Guess what? We we will gain more if we come together and pray for that individual yeah. than we would attack that individual. But if our prayer reached to the heavens and that prayer person was able to give them life correctly to God and change, we gain. We did not lose. Hallelujah. Yeah. So the power of prayer is here to give us, to help us gain, to increase, to become better. So what are you saying, preacher? Today I'm talking about the power of prayer that's going to enlarge the kingdom. I'm talking about the power of prayer that's going to make us better people. I'm talking about the power of prayer that's going to be able to pull my sister or my brother out of the fire. I'm here to tell you that the power of prayer works. Hallelujah. That we, if we would just pray instead of use all the other arsenals that we have, that we will understand that we will save more people. Hallelujah. That right now we're in that season where we are to influence people to come to God and know who Jesus Christ is. We are in that season. Hallelujah. The Great Commission did not end. So we still got an assignment to do. We still got to tell the world about the goodness of Jesus Christ. We still have to reach to the lost. We still have to go to places that nobody else want to go to. Just to talk about the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we can't do it if we got all the problems. We can't get to saving people. We constantly here fighting our self and fighting our brothers and sisters. I heard this yesterday from pastor. She was saying that the churches are being impacted by distractions. Distraction. PLC, for us, this ends today. Come on. For us, maturity. Yes. A lot, lot of things is knowledge. Uh -huh. If you possess the knowledge, yes. you don't have to go to those, those ways that other people are going. And we will exhibit a love like never before. Yes. And mind you, I'm preaching beyond this room. Yeah. Because people need to know that Jesus loved them. Yes. But at the same time, they need to see people that experience love. Yes. From other people that love Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. That's how we win people. Yes. Hallelujah. It's very easy. And look, I love so many people in this room, and I have to put it out there. You don't understand that some people have achieved so much in life, they don't have to do nothing for nobody else. Why are you here trying to save people when you got all you need in life? Why are you here praying for people when you could be home watching TV like everybody else? Why are you here? Why? Just think about it. I need people, when you come across this, to really realize this. Uh, that God called them out. Yeah. Not just for themselves. Right. Uh, but he called us out for others. So it's not about the truth. It's not about the playing. It's not about the fame. It's not about the status. But God called me to work. Other than that, I always tell people I could have stayed right where I was. Uh, everybody wasn't struggling doing what they was. Uh, but I didn't know the love of God. Hallelujah. The love of God drew me out of where I was. Hallelujah. And then he opened my eyes and showed me what I was doing wrong, how I was hurting people. And when I looked at it, I said, God, I'm not only hurting people, I'm hurting you. He said, well, how are you hurting God? Because God loved the people that I was hurting. You can call them crackheads, but God loved them. You can call them drug dealers, and all the only thing worth is God love them. Hallelujah. That's all I, God blanket all that. He going to say, I love them. Hallelujah. You can talk about the girl that's giving up her body, but God said, I love them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You talk about the, that bad little boy that everybody said nothing good going to come out of him. God is saying, I love him. When I do harm to him, I'm hurting God. That's how I looked at it. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So learning the lesson, the powers of prayer, I thank you for uh, allowing me this space, Bishop. I thank you this time that you come here today, hearing the word of God. I hope I was able to bless somebody. I know the power of prayer sounds like a simple message. But think of that angle from Hezekiah. Hezekiah possessed the power to pray to God himself. Uh, hallelujah. Not only pray to God, things happened when he prayed to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he still was in court. And he still was aligned with his prophet. Hallelujah. Because God just spoke to the prophet and said, turn around. Amen. It wasn't no discourse. It wasn't Hezekiah talking about you. I knew you shouldn't have said that. But he told him to come, turn back. Come on now. Hallelujah. Thank you. And then let's talk about how prayer avails much. Yes. So we have to realize that our prayer will change our settings, our situation. Someone in their home, you need to get out and understand, come to the church. I know people yeah. preaching against the church. I'm pre people preaching you to run from the church. I'm preaching to you to run to the church. We are here. There's people that are here that God has placed to help heal you. There's people that are here to help build you up. There's people that are here to help repair you. There are people that are here to walk with you while you're trying to get off your addictions. There are people that are here in the church. Hallelujah. I'm going to shoot my big gun. The church has everything that's needed to change the world. We already have the buildings. We already have the leadership in place. We already have people that have the same scars that you have. Hallelujah. And when you come, your wound may be open, but they're going to show you a healed scar. That's going to inspire you that I can make it. So if I can get off a drug, someone's going to show you, look at my scars. We're not going to get on a, a pious and, and built up. When you come, we're going to show you, I used to be a drug dealer. We gonna, you come here, you're going to see I used to be a, a on drugs and all this kind of stuff. You're going to be able to see yourself, uh, but you're going to be able to see a reflection yeah. of the healed yeah. you, the perfected you, oh, or what yeah. you can do. Hallelujah. Yeah. Some people, you're going to heal because it's tangible. Hallelujah. Oh. It's no longer at a distance where you can't touch it. Come on into these churches and touch people that are in a place where you need to be. If you want to fix your marriage, come on into the house and learn from God how to fix your marriage. If you want to be healed from drugs and all, come on in. Come on into the house. Hallelujah. I don't care what they say. Run towards the house. In the name of Jesus, God is waiting on you. Matter of fact, he's calling you right now. Hallelujah. Come see us. If you see us on this line, just start. You may see it maybe a week or so later. Just start posting on them on uh, where y'all from. What areas y'all are. Can y'all help me? Hallelujah. And we will be there for you. Amen. Amen. I thank everybody.